Let's go through the frequently made mistakes for assignment 2B. A couple things to note. First of all, the final skeletons will be released fairly soon. We're just putting the finishing touches on the more extensive unit tests for everything. And, uh, but in the meantime, you can address the comments that I pushed to your code. Make sure that you submit your, your uh, submission. A number of people lost substantial points because they didn't bother to submit the um, assignment to be. That's, these are not optional. They're intended to be part of the process for reviewing what you're doing and giving you feedback. A couple other things, too. Uh, a lot of people need to make sure you comment your code and format it properly. Uh, let me see if I can find an example of proper formatting. When you write streams code, you uh, will make yourself happier if you follow certain programming conventions. Let's go ahead and see if I can find an example here that I could use to show you what I'm talking about. Let's see. So let's take a look at this piece of code here. Hopefully this will have the streams code in it. Maybe not. Yeah, so this is a good example. So one of the things people sometimes do, first of all, some people just don't comment their code at all, which is not a good idea. But if you're going to comment it, try to avoid the temptation of sticking the comments at the end of the intermediate and, and terminal operations like that. The reason you don't want to do that is it starts to run off the side of the screen really fast. So instead, I recommend you kind of format it like this. So here we're creating a parallel stream, and then we're doing something for each element in the stream. And you can see the nice thing about doing it this way is that it, it generalizes quite nicely. So you don't have to worry about things running off the end of the screen. Everything always goes in the same place. And it's easy to kind of see at a glance how things work. Um, I also recommend having a formatting style like this one, where you, you put the stream operations underneath whatever creates the stream in the first place, or whatever has the, the data source that you're going to turn into a stream. So rather than writing code like this, where the first one is somehow treated different than the other ones, just a good habit to get into to put them like, like that. OK, so that's what I mean by formatting the code properly. All right, popping back to the code. Make sure you implement the array splitterator. The undergrads have to do this as well. Turns out not to be very hard to do, but uh, Make sure you implement that. That'll be tested in the new skeletons that'll come out with the new unit test shortly. Here's a problem I saw with the synchronized array class. So uh, the idea here is you're trying to take an unsynchronized array and wrap it inside of a synchronized array. And you don't have to do something as complicated as this. You can simply uh, use either the unsynchronized array constructor or just assign the unsynchronized array directly to the uh, field, the local field. I, had a, I noticed I had a wrong comment over this method. I've, I've fixed that in the, in the next skeletons that you'll see. Uh, you actually need to make a copy of the unsynchronized array. This is kind of a copy constructor, a, a copy constructor-like thing. And uh, so you'll need to make sure that you don't just make an uninitialized array. That was the, the comment was wrong. Also, for the constructors, you don't need to put synchronized blocks in constructors. Does anybody know why you don't need to put a synchronized statement or synchronized block in a constructor? Why would you not need to put a, what, what's the purpose of having a synchronized statement or synchronized block? make sure it's only, ch exactly, the answer is to make sure that only one thing on a time is, is uh, 
accessing the in internal state? Why would you not need to synchronize the constructor? Exactly, because a constructor is only going to be called one time, and so you haven't even made the object, so you don't have to worry about protecting it. There's only going to be a call to the constructor in one thread, so you don't have to worry about synchronizing it. Um, there's a couple of methods like the iterator factory and the streams and parallel streams factory and the splitterator factory that say must be manually synchronized by the user. So what that means is you don't have to synchronize them. And I'm just following the way that Java works here. I'm not sure why they did it that way, but uh, that's why they did it. So anytime you see the comment must be manually synchronized by the user, that means it's the caller's responsibility to synchronize, not the, the method. So you can omit those, those synchronized blocks. Um, of course, conversely, here's an example of methods in the synchronized array that are not properly synchronized. So as you can see here, the code is incorrect because it's not synchronized. So something important is missing. It should be pretty obvious what it is, but make sure you fix that. Several people did that. What's the point of having a synchronized array if all it does is just forward blindly to the unsynchronized array without doing any locking? Um, another thing, this is just a minor performance issue. In the try advance method, that's part of the uh, splitterator for the unsynchronized array. Don't use the get method, use un unchecked to array instead, just because the, the get method has an extra check for exception, uh, for bound, for range violations, and you don't need to do that because of the way that try advance should be defined to work. Um, the graduate students need to make sure you use synchronized array in your supplier for the, for the array collector, not unsynchronized array. So that's one of the things that makes it different. That's why you wrote the, uns that's why you wrote the synchronized array. Uh, also, and this, this applies for everybody, make sure that you use the appropriate method references in supplier and accumulator rather than writing things out verbosely using either uh, the Lambda expression version or the anonymous inner class version. Both of those are you know, way more verbose than you need to be, and so use the method reference syntax instead. Uh, same thing here. This is, this is actually one where there isn't a method reference that does this, but that comes out of the box. But uh, you can rewrite this to use the Lambda syntax instead of using the more verbose anonymous array or anonymous inner class syntax. So make sure you do that. Um, here is one way to implement the characteristics method, but this isn't really the cleanest way of doing it. So take a look at the video and the slides on the non-concurrent collector for details on a more concise way to do this. So that should be simple to figure out. Make sure you do that. Uh, this doesn't have the right results at all because it's not sending any of the flags. So don't do it that way. Um, a, number of, a surprisingly large number of people did kind of crazy things in the compute methods. In particular, they didn't join the results. So they, they forked the results, but they didn't join the results. So of course, you'll never get the results back to, to what you mean to have, and you'll get the wrong, either the wrong numbers, or you won't ha handle errors correctly, and so on. So make sure you take a, a careful look at the specification that says, essentially, make sure you join the results. And uh, don't just return fork join tasks that size. That's not the, the right way to do that. A couple other places where you could replace the use of lambda expressions with method references. So use a method reference. This is one of those things where your compiler should automatically give you a hint to use the, uh, or it'll actually do the transformation for you automatically. So if you put your mouse over that and and right click, I think it is, it'll give you the option to replace the lambda expression with a method reference. But just get in the habit of doing that, it's cleaner. Please replace reduce with dot sum. This doesn't make your code any faster or any more correct, it's just a little bit more concise and is the way that a Java streams programmer would typically write it. Um, same problem here, the compute method isn't actually joining the results, so make sure you join the results, not just do whatever this is doing. I'm not quite sure what this is doing, but it's not the right thing. Um, another issue, this is for the process image task class. 
you'll see that um, the person's correctly turning the forks into a stream, they were doing the map operation properly, they were doing the count, but they weren't handling the null results properly. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. You can either have map handle null results, or you can have map just do the, the joining, and then you can do a filter, and you can filter out objects, colon, um, non-null, or not filter out, filter in, objects, colon, non-null. So that's a little cleaner, cool way of doing that using filter. Um, and here's kind of the, the way you might do this if you were using it the longhand way. But I recommend you don't, again, use lambda expressions. Instead, go for the, the cool method reference approach here instead. It's just a little bit more concise and arguably easier to read. OK, so those were the main frequently made mistakes that I saw. Uh, everybody who submitted your, your uh, assignment to be solution should have comments if for some reason you submitted it and you don't have comments, let me know. I might have forgotten to push, but I think I, I pushed them all. And again, make sure that you submit these things, otherwise you lose major points. They're not optional, they're part of, the, part of the way that the grading system works. And you can read more about that if you take a look at the assignments.html file in the CS891F uh, website on my site, which I posted to Piazza. Uh, like I said, we should have the final solution skeletons out momentarily, hopefully later today. We're just working out the last of the unit tests. They should be much more extensive, give you a lot more feedback, hopefully catch any remaining niggling mistakes in your code. And uh, so we'll start that. And I will put out the next programming assignment in a day or two as well. So that one will be focusing on streams and parallel streams.